Are you serious? Are you freaking serious? Not again! Why? I swear I pushed that button! Oh no! Well, fetch. Okay. So, this is apparently going in the beginning of the movie. You just watched me click the button to stop the recording. But guess what? That wasn't stopping the recording. That's the start of the audio recording. And this audio is going to be terrible because I turned that audio off. But I don't care. Screw it. I'm sorry. This is not going to have a face cam episode. It's just going to be a normal one. Once it's gone past this point, I can't fix it. So, enjoy the audio. I'm very sorry about this. <laughs> um... If it weren't annoying, I'd put a little picture of me in the corner, but you know it's me. Uh, I'm so disappointed in myself. Anyway, thanks for being here, and enjoy the episode as best you can. I'm sure it'll be fine. It's not like I add a whole lot of it in facial expressions. Although this one had some good ones. Dang it! Uh, oh well. I'll see you in a bit. How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the and welcome back to Steins Gate Zero, where we are in this alternate timeline, which has been going for a while, and I'm pretty darn sure this isn't the main route, so I'm very interested in, like, where are we going from here? <laughs> Did I accidentally hit the right route for some reason? I, I just, I, it doesn't feel like it. It doesn't feel like it at all, but here we are. I, I, it feels like in the first game and in a few other endings that I've tried out, it's been a lot quicker to get to the ending than this. So I guess we'll have to find out. But here we are on the train with Maho, which means that you're going to be seeing a lot of editing of flipping up and down. Um, also, uh, inexplicably, I think I finally turned a corner with my recovery. Uh, yes, last night and today have been the first days in a long time where I've kind of started feeling like myself again. And I think I'll just be able to record like usual today. Granted, I have to record a little longer. I still need to be drinking plenty of water, so I'll be doing that throughout the video for sure. And ultimately, I could relapse a little and need to go, go to bed, but whatever. Thank you guys for your patience with that. It's really nice to finally be feeling like myself again. Um, so yeah, so Maho, we just told her the truth about Kagari, the implication that that Kurisu had the capability and knowledge to make a time machine. And I have the theory that this route, what they're trying to do is they're trying to access the black box rather than the laptop that Maho has. They're trying to get to the black box in order to get the truth from Amadeus. I was thinking, my, my running theory has been that Kagari was intended to be a stand-in for Kudusu to believe she was Kudusu and that she would then be allowed to access the black box. But on the other hand, now, we think that there could be a little more to that. It, but if that's not the case, then I don't know why they would go to the trouble of trying to imprint Kudusu's mind into Kagari, unless they wanted K K uh, the, 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 the a pseudo Kudusu to be able to translate the information and even maybe build upon it. But I don't know. I really think it's all about accessing the black box. I made a point to say that the only person who could normally access that would be yourself. So I think that's really what's going on. I think he tried to make Amadeus give the information and she wouldn't and she fell apart and ended up like being scrapped. Uh, but he knows the information is tantalizingly close. And we also know the other scientist is involved somehow because she wasn't in the other branch, but she's very prominent in this one. So but that's going to be something or other, but we'll have to find that out as we delineate through the story. But now we got to get a revel with Maho's thoughts and see what she thinks and possibly see what happens if she tries to she confront the people from Victor Prandia or not. I'm not sure. So we'll just have to see what she does now that she's got some pretty decent info. Can't believe it. Neither can I, girl. <laughs> On the train back, Maho Hiyajo was having trouble controlling her excitement. Two girls who said they came from the future, and Rintaro Okabe's story about the time leap machine. Normally, she'd never believe them, but if Kurisu Makase's mind had made these things possible, she could accept them. That's a lot of faith. I mean, granted, it's true, but that's a lot of faith having someone. Kurisu was a genius. She just might be capable of it. To Maho, Kurisu seemed capable of anything. And most of all, she'd seen it for herself. On the way back from the lab, Suzaha had taken her to the top of the radio building and showed her the real time machine. It was night and she didn't have a lot of time to look at it closely, but she could tell at a glance that it wasn't made with modern technology. 
Honestly, she wanted to start work on making another one tomorrow. No, right now even. Hold your horses, that's dangerous. But she had something to do first. The time leap machine that Kudusu had made. She needed to make an improved version. That meant she was going to be practically living at Okabe's lab for a while. Improved version? I wonder why. And Okabe approved this. Fascinating. So she decided to get what she needed from the office in Waco City. Uh, no, no, not Waco, it's Waco. Waco is in Texas. <laughs> from outside the building, she could see that the lights are still on despite the late hour. Moho! Uh-oh. As soon as she'd got inside, Dr. Leskin had rushed over, his face pale. Uh-oh. Oh, I can see it's been trashed. Oh, fetch. The room had clearly been ransacked. Of course, the place barely had anything in it to begin with, so with a quick glance, it was hard to see what had changed. But Maho and Dr. Leskin's desk had clearly been searched. The drawer, drawer, the drawers, the drawers had been locked, but the locks had been broken and the contents spilled out. Dr. Reyes hadn't brought brought much of anything, fortunately, and she escaped with very little damage. But her drawers had been dumped out of two. Hmm. This was what happened. What happened? What happened? Yeah, and I wouldn't say a thief. It looked like a group of them. If they struck here, they probably know where the lab is, and it would be easy for them to get there. Wouldn't it make more sense to hit the uh, Riken Institute next door? Only a few people even know this office existed to begin with. Suddenly, Okabe's words began to take on a new meaning for her. Yeah! Yeah, as in, like, you're putting a big bullseye on your face. Could this have something to do with what he'd said? Was the secret war over the time machine already beginning? His sister has started. Yes. Uh, hi. Are the police here yet? I would be shocked if they hadn't been called yet. No die. Kirishu's laptop. Was the Kirishu's laptop here? She checked the desk and the drawers and couldn't find a single thing missing. Hmm. Alright, so if nothing was stolen, then maybe this was more of a message, you know, letting them know how in how unsecure they are and to tread carefully. Or they were really looking for something that just happened not to be here and it's very specific, like the laptop. <laughs> Hmm. That would be so strange if not. Hi. Hi. Well, I'd go check. So Yeah, how have you not yet? Nani mo torarete Hmm. So, I don't like that. Maho wasn't sure that was a good idea, but she could understand that going to the police would be a big hassle. Okay, actually, now that I think about it, at, like, if I'm being honest, being a international figure, you know, being from another country, being here that would cause a hassle just trying to integrate with the japanese justice system in any way or any system when you're a foreigner has got to be a pain in the neck as uh, luckily they speak japanese like could you imagine if you were traveling there with like very minimal japanese aka like if i were traveling to japan <laughs> minimal is like an exaggeration at best and then i got in trouble like what if i got mugged like what could i even do like actually, the the honest truth would be that if I got like, like, like if I was stolen from, 
I could try and contact the local police if I had to find some help, but ultimately I'd need to call the, the my embassy. Like, uh, that's rule number one. Like, if something's happening to you in another country, get contact your embassy. Like, they are the ones that will have the resources to help you, especially if you have something to go wrong, like lo- losing a passport or physical identification. You have to work through the embassy, and it's the best place to go. If you need a place that's relatively safe, that's also a good location to get to if you can get there. Just a good rule of thumb knowledge. Your embassy is kind of like a little sliver of your own country in that country. And if you're going to need, if you need backup, if you need help, that's the place you should go. Especially since they weren't Japanese to begin with. Yeah, okay, so she's bringing up the same point. And more than anything, Dr. Leskinen probably didn't want to lose time that could be spent on research. Well, this is a bit disruptive no matter what happens. The same was true of Maho, too. Yeah. Oh, Maho. Oh, no. What have you done to this room? Actually, that's going to agree to give her a vacation much more readily than she expected. Maybe coming to the office over New Year's had paid off. Now she'd be able to focus on the time loop machine. Once she got back to her hotel room, she quickly got her things ready. She wasn't checking out of the hotel, but she needed clothes and other things so she could stay in the lab for a while. Yes. Yes. Once she finished packing her bag, she grabbed another bag that was placed next to it. It was a laptop and portable hard drive that she'd gotten from Kirishu's mother after her death. She tried many times to crack the password, but never managed to succeed. She knew that she wouldn't have time to do anything with it, but she still didn't want to leave it here. Good girl. <sighs> after she made one last check of her things and got ready to leave the room, an, adi- an idea came to her. An idea. I'm not speaking right. Not bad idea if I say so myself. Yeah, brain stuff's been interesting. I went to the store today for the first time, like, because I was, like, feeling energized enough to actually go do something like that. So I went around an air and got some basic food and stuff. Like, I'm planning to make baked spaghetti tonight, tomorrow night for my family. Um, should be really fun, nice and simple. I went to go check out and I had to put in my password for my card. And I just brain farted. I literally just stood there staring at the screen being like, wait, what's my, what's the password for my card? And... I actually like I had to like I sit there just like digging through my mind. I've never forgotten something like that before, and I was like, I was like I was just struggling and struggling, and, and like I waited long enough that the machine actually got impatient with me and just had me run it as credit, which is fine. But like I walked out of there just befuddled, just like what what was the number? I eventually figured it out, but I had to like strain to think about it. Um, I actually have to say, it's kind of freaky to say this, but like with my recent surgery, I've lost a ton of weight. Um, I actually lost like 40 pounds in this past month just because of the way I had to like eat and like, well, not really eat. I was on a liquid diet and for a while after the surgery, I just like eating was the thing that was like, it was horrid to even think about just because it was so like, I so like, I don't know damaged i guess you could say like there was a lot of like it was since it was internal work like that whole system was just going crazy so i didn't eat anything for like four days like at all and like it's weird to think that because i literally just didn't feel hungry at all it was bizarre but uh yeah so i was like but like when you lose weight quickly like that it, your body often has to pull sources of stuff like protein from parts of your body and that can conclude your brain so like the doctors have been very clear about me drinking and like consuming like good amounts of protein every day to try and minimize that at all but with such a rapid weight loss i think i actually did lose a little bit of gray matter or something because especially at first like my thoughts were fuzzy and it was hard to i really grasp concepts i've gotten a lot better and because i've been maintaining a good diet it's really not been a big issue but first that was one of those first things where i kind of realized like okay maybe there was an actual like lasting effect from that but thankfully the numbers came back to me like it wasn't permanent it wasn't like it was it was more like i hadn't thought about it in over a a year rather than just a couple weeks but still freaks me out to think that and i wonder what else i've like kind of let slip from my mind without knowing about it yeah scary i bet you i forgot a few passwords you know since i changed my passwords for a lot of various applications so i'm sure there's a couple websites that i'm just gonna have to completely redo my passwords for Anyway, 
Maybe this is what Kudusu wanted? She quickly shook her head and chased the idea from her mind. Kudusu would get mad at her. Life and death were like a binary, zero and one. You could be one or the other. There was no will that exact existed. There was no will that existed after death. If it existed at all, it existed inside the brain. Hmm. Definitely a very secular view of that. Ah, oh, back to Okabe. Good. My editing, my future editor will be happy. AKA me, because I do everything on this show. I also, by the way, I did a Humble Bundle thing. I got access to a lot of sound effects. Most are garbage, <laughs> but I found a few and I hope to be able to use them, especially because I'm thinking of making some, I've done lore videos in the past based on books. I'm thinking of starting to do lore and opinion videos about visual novels. I've gotten to the point where I feel like I've got a grasp of the, of the concept enough that I'd like to make featurettes basically, but it's kind of new for me and take, it's going to take a lot of editing. And so the only thing I've got to go off of is other people who do similar videos. But having my own unique sound effects that I don't have to worry about getting copyright claimed, or I shouldn't because I totally bought the rights for them, should make that process a lot easier because I really want to tread carefully around YouTube's terms of services and copyright. I don't want to step on toes. Every time I've stepped on toes so far, I've been able to get it cleared up because I've had the right to do what I do. I triple check everything because I know even down the line, I can cause myself big problems if I do stuff now that isn't consistent with the rules. So I've been very particular about that. Anyway, God, I'm going rambly today. Not even about the game, I'm, I'm sorry. Anyway, I just got excited because I just did that and it's on my mind. Several days passed and I still had no idea what had planted the memories in Kagari's head. I went all the way out to talk to the priest who had found her and even questioned the locals in the surrounding area, but I had no luck. Suza seemed to be doing her own research. She hadn't been back to the lab since then. She was in touch with Daru at regular intervals, so I didn't think she was in danger. I asked Tanoji and Moaka again, but neither of them seemed to have any luck. In this world line, the lab hadn't even been attacked, which meant they might be up to something else. Ooh, that's a good point. Palm. Even if they were, I had no idea. I had no way of even imagining what it was. But I was sure that someone had kidnapped a young Kagari Shina and experimented on her, and only recently had she escaped. They had to be planning something, and I was sure it was bad. Well, good, good job, Einstein. We didn't have time to wait for them to act. But without any clues, there was nothing we could do. My mind kept going in circles, and I kept getting more frustrated and nervous with every minute. Boy, you both sound tired, but especially Maho. Maho staggered out of the development room, sank into the sofa and smiled sleepily. There were dark spots under her eyes. For the last few days, she'd been working on the device without any sleep. Fetch. I can't even imagine days. Her work needed pay up to pay off soon, as fast as possible. Yeah, we had only tried that because we'd actually seen success previous to Kurisu. The funny thing is that's actually not true anymore. I have to use my headphones and my headphones, I, that makes it so I can kind of answer the phone without touching it and there's Bluetooth. Bluetooth you might be able to work because of the Bluetooth signal still like um, uh, sending various uh, radio signals as well. But headphones doesn't, so I could. Uh, if I ended up having to use a timely machine, it could be very touch and go. I might not be able to make it work half the time. You, parahippocampal gyrus. That is a war calendar day word right there. We know how to do that one. Cur black holes. Yeah, 
Yeah, wait, how are we going to make that happen? Are we having to hack CERN again? Yeah, yeah, but come on. Trust me, last time it did not end well. <laughs> to compress memories, we needed CERN's LHC, no matter what. That one took a lot of thought. If we made an enemy out of CERN, that tragedy I'd gone through before would repeat. But the main reason that CERN had attacked us was the D-mails we'd sent to the past. If it weren't for that, they probably wouldn't have bothered. And since we weren't sending D-mails, CERN probably would never even detect us. Probably. Fortunately, Suza had the IBM 5100 that we needed for the hack. Things were coming together better than I'd expected. That means something terrible is about to happen. <laughs> Who? Uh. Maho? I nodded at Daru. For the past few days, more of Kudusu's memories have been invading Kagari's mind. Oh yeah, that makes sense. Lately, she'd even started discussing complex technical subjects with Maho. She was acting just like Kudusu used to when she lived in America. At first, Maho seemed put off, but she eventually adapted. Maho probably wanted to get the details out of, uh, about the device from Kudusu, so it seemed to be helping. That's terrible. <laughs> こんなラボで本当にタイムリープマシンを作ってたなんて実際にタイムマシンを目にした今でも信じられないわ。いや、でも人間の記憶を丸ごとデータ化して過去に飛ばすなんて発想はすごいですよね。さすがはマホ先
I remembered what Kurusu had said when she'd finished the time loop machine. She'd said you could never put your memories inside someone else's mind. It would destroy their personality. But if, just if, we were to leave Kagari like this, what would happen? There was a chance that her own memories would disappear and only Kurusu's would remain. If that happened, who would the person in front of me become? Would they be Kagari? Or would they be Kurusu? If it was Kurusu... <laughs> no. Dangerous, dangerous waters. It would never be Kurusu. Like, there are going to be differences. You can say that they could possibly have the same memories. You could even say that possibly by wiping out the original memories and personality, you could construct a personality that's very similar to the original. But there's going to be more to it than that. Memories are one thing, but actual environment are another. Kagari's body's been through different things. Her physical nature, even if she's changed to look like a uh, I'm, I'm mixing up Kurusu. Even if she's changed to look 100% like Kurusu, her body is not Kurusu's body. There's going to be biological influences. There's going to be biological histories and futures that are going to have an effect. There's different lifestyle choices. There's different events that have happened. And I believe that even if Kagari's personality were effectively wiped out, those memories wouldn't have be altogether gone, developing into a new personality and a new person. You can't just replace one person with another. Like there would be a new conglomeration, maybe more Kurusu than Kagari in the end, but it would still be a different person than either of them. It can't have a complete rebirth from death. Not in this way. And certainly not in a way that would be truly meaningful. Kurusu's dead. That will never change. Her memories may live on, but Amadeus was more Kurusu than Kagari would be in, re in reality. Only difference here is the access to their environments, but again, still not the same. That wasn't true. It was impossible. I couldn't even think about it. But the more I thought, the more I felt a horrible idea tugging at my mind, no matter how much I tried to ignore it. I know, Kabe. <sighs> I have no idea. I have no idea. I don't know what we're supposed to do. It would have been great. It would have been great if Mary was around. But unfortunately, both she and Lukako had got to school. Both of them were worried about Kagari and had told me to contact them if anything came up, but that didn't mean I could rely on them all the time. ちょっと気分転換に散歩でもしてきたらどう。そうね。人間じっとしてると余計なこと考えちゃうものよ。少しくらい体を動かした方がいいかもしれないわね。Maybe, but she needs to be with somebody in case she has a breakdown or somebody comes to snatch her. というわけでオカリン、かがりたんを頼んだ。Good, good idea. わかった。Fetch, man. The two of us walked out of the central street together, but we didn't really have anything to do. This is the king of, of awkward situations. The yeah, outside must have made her feel a little better because Kagai was starting to calm down. So, ああ。君の行きたいところでいい。それじゃあ、クリスさんと行ったところに連れてってほしい。I feel like that's a bad idea, but okay. え?オカリンさんがクリスさんと歩いたことのある場所に連れて行って。well, your memories aren't going to be triggered because all of those memories were from before she came here and met him. Oh, fetch. All right, well, if we're going to pick one, there's Nyan Nyan. That was one of my favorite scenes when uh, they went and, like, they bought that How to Date book for the Lukaku route. <laughs> and they're just sitting there reading the book, trying to decipher, like, how you date somebody. But they were, like, on a date while they did it, which was hilarious. Um, where else did they go? They went to the bridge, but she, we already kind of taken her there. 
Oh, what, what? We really didn't do very much with Kirisu outside the lab, did we? The radio building, I suppose, but that seems like a real dangerous place to take her. Somewhere I'd been with Kirisu. Where could that be? The coin laundry in the neighborhood? <laughs> Horan Park? Oh, okay, yeah, I remember that. Gyudon Sambo? I guess you could take her to the um, convention hall. That was a place we went a couple times, though I don't think we ever went inside with her. Also, there's the bike ride that we did with the uh, Suzaha Loop. I hadn't spent a lot of time with her at fun or romantic places. I spent a lot of time with her, but most of it had been dispersed into many different world lines. I'd gone through that time and again and again. But most of it had been spent arguing and working with her at the lab. We'd never spent any time going places to have fun. And we'd never made it to a, a Mori either. A Mori, that was where like they, she was going to go like confront her dad when she, when uh, the like lecture got canceled and she wanted to bring Okabe with her, which was really cool. Well, that was the radio building. Oh boy, oh boy. The place where Kirisu and I met. It was... There. <laughs> Ew, this is a bad idea. A brightly covered building in front of the Akihabara station. The radio building. This was where it started. Yes, this is where everything had begun. On that day, the time machine appeared on the roof of the building. It was just after that when I met Kurisu. I could still remember it. The challenging look in her eyes. Thinking back, I may have already fallen in love with her then. But even though this was just a place I'd met her, this was also a place where... where I'd... No, oh, I don't need to see that anymore! <laughs> Oh my gosh, darn it. Falling in love with her that now, I really can't believe in love at first sight. I believe you can be swept away by somebody at first sight. I believe you can have those initial first steps at first sight. I do believe that, but it's not perfect. You don't fall in love immediately, but you can get a good head start if the two of you have good chemistry right away. But love is something that builds over time. It doesn't have to take very long, but it's something that builds as you get to know somebody. It can't be just when you meet them and have like one conversation, just because there's too much depth to love for it to be that quick. <laughs> Lately, I'd been so busy with Kagari that I started to think I was getting a little better, but maybe I wasn't. Mm -mm. Whenever I came here, I couldn't help but remember what happened that day. But. <laughs> right. Right. I couldn't just stand out here forever. I couldn't keep Mary, Daru, and the others worrying forever. If I needed to get over it at some point, then... Something soft touched my hand. Kagari was holding my hand tightly in hers. Kagari led me down the bustling street towards the radio building. My knees felt like they were about to give out at any second. Oh, man. Even after I'd gone inside, I was still doing better than I had thought I would. But I still didn't feel like climbing the stairs where it had happened. We took the elevator to the roof. Ferris, aka Rumiho Akia, why did I still do? had carefully locked the door to the roof so that no one who wasn't authorized could enter. I'd been given a key too, but today was the first time I was able to use it. Lock it behind you. The first thing I saw after coming onto the roof was the strangely shaped object, the time machine. Oh, 
私これに乗ってきたんだよ Lock the door behind you, Okabe. What are you doing? Kagari happily ran up to the time machine. It was right after she'd separated from Suzuha that she lost her memories. She remembered going from the future to this place in 1975. Unfortunately, it wasn't very pretty right now. But Kagari spoke as if there was an endless blue sky stretching out in front of us. ママに会いたいよって。I Dang. They freaking that then then the planet was effectively doomed. If it wasn't getting any sunlight, then it didn't even matter how much the wars fought, like it's it was over. Like there wasn't any way that they were gonna get back from that. The mid seventies were right after the big economic growth spurt. Ecological concerns weren't as important as they are now. That was also when air pollution was a really big deal. The air probably wasn't as clean as it is now. If it seemed beautiful to her anyway, that must have meant the air in the future was really terrible. Okarin-san, was it here with Chris and the first time? No, it's not here. It's here. Oh. Cold drop hit my nose. Oh, fetch. Oh. Come on, Okabe. Come on, life. That's right. Oh. Yeah, this was a very different conversation. Dang it. Dang it. This is when she was telling us to choose Mayuri. This conversation sucked. The rain had been falling then, too. When she'd learned that either she or Miyuri was fated to die, she'd come here to look up at the sky like this. Yeah, oh, that. Get inside, get inside. It's too similar. What had she been thinking then? And she'd entrusted her fate to another person. To me. Kagari dragged me inside away from the noise of the falling rain. Lock the door, lock the door. A few months later I found myself sitting there. The place was being renovated and none of the stores were open. The lights were off too. It made the place seem very gloomy and very familiar. <sighs> that day after the rain, Kurusu and I had leaned up against each other and talked. And this was also the place where... Oh, the first kiss, right? <laughs> Strictly speaking, this is where I first met her in the Beta World Line. That day, half a year ago. I remember this. I thought that that was resolved because we went back. But maybe not. 
maybe that wasn't actually what if what if that's this okabe like what if we eventually no no because fixing the whole pro no it was the other okabe because like I don't know. I can't. I'm trying to remember to make sure I could account for this visit, this meeting before he met her. What was it? When? When was that? I'm gonna have to think about that. まるで今にも泣き出しそうで。それにすごく辛そうでした。どうして私前にあなたと会ったことありますか？ <sighs> Thinking back, that was the beginning of everything. I wished I'd never met her. If only I'd known this world would be the result. If I'd never met her, I wouldn't have felt this way. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Okape, why? Why do you have to be so... I felt something soft touch my face. Kogori.私が怖がっているとママがよくこうしてくれたの。どうして？だってホカリンさんすごく辛そうで、今にも泣き出しそうなんだもん。Kurai patted me on the head again and again, as if I were a child. あいつと。クリスト。初めて会ったのはここだった。ここってこの踊り場。あ。最初の印象は最悪。初めて会ったっていうのに上から目線では睨みつけてくるまで可愛さのかけらもなかった。もっとも向こうだってそう思ってただろうけどな。After all, all the time I was rambling about nonsense like organization agents. Yeah, <sighs> that was the awful world line too, though. Right after I'd met Kurisu in this one, she'd. どうしてそれを。マホさんから聞いたの。それでネットで調べてみたんだけど、自分でもびっくりするくらい似てた。そんな人の記憶が私の中にあるなんて、それも運命なのかなって。it always was. Fate laughed at us. Toyed with us. A drop of rain ran down Kagari's hair and hit the floor. I'm not sure I like where this is going. No. Oh. Maybe you'd look a lot like her and talk a lot like her, but you wouldn't be her. You'd be you. そう簡単に行くものじゃないよ。でも、もしもだよ。もしもそうなるなら、オカリンさんは嬉しい。Fetch. You can't. You can't ask that. My answer is really easy, but I'm not the one who's super invested. <sighs> I keep trying to play it like, what if it was the love of my life? Who had died, and then somebody who looked a lot like her said that to me. God, fetch, there wouldn't be much room for logic in this scenario. It would all be emotional and confusing and just terrible. It's like, how could you even think that? But at the same time, you can't help but think that. Oh gosh. Oh, so not fair. That's not a fair question. 
クリスさんになったら。No。ホカリンさんは嬉しい。No。No。ガガリ。ガガリ should have her own life。クリス had hers. It ended tragically. It ended early. And it was horrible. But she had her life. Kagari has had so much of her life already stolen away from her. The rest of it shouldn't be sacrificed on an altar to try and bring back the dead. It was the voice of the demon I tried so many times to ignore. I didn't want that. Or did I? Demo. 私はやっぱり嫌だな。Another drop of rain struck the floor. このまま自分がどうやって生きてきたのかもわからないまま、誰からも必要とされないまま消えちゃうなんて。I know. No, we need to keep her here. かがり。私、どうなっちゃうのかな。私は。I don't know. I don't know. Kagari was shaking a little. It wasn't just because of the cold. Yeah. I never did figure out what she was apologizing for. The first time I went to Lukaku's room, it did look like a girl's room. What a change of gears that was! <laughs> Yanabayashi Shrine was closer to the, ra- to the radio building than the lab, so I decided to bring Kagari there. Miguri had sent me a message on the way, so I had her come here first. I figured that Kagari needed Mommy Mayuri right now more than she needed me. Just like I thought, the second she saw Miri's face, she relaxed a little. Nukuko handed us towels to wipe away the rain and ran out of the room to start a bath. If it's gonna make me choose between like a fake Kurusu and、uh, Kagari, I, it's again, it's just like the first game. With all the choices, pretty much, especially towards the end, like I knew exactly what choices I was gonna be making. But gosh darn it, was that button hard to push?、Mm. オカリンも風邪ひいちゃうから着替えだけでもしてね。Right. えっと、なんとかする。True. Like, what are we gonna wear? There's nothing here our size. Maybe I could borrow Lukaku's father's clothes? Just as I got up to leave the room. カガリーちゃん Uh oh. That was a weird noise. It sounded like a sigh, but like static too. Something was wrong with Kagari. She was staring at Miri's face, confused. Kagari? Oh no. Are we too late? Kagari? Don't say it. Don't say it. Hold on. Just hold on. <laughs> We're getting so close. We are so, we're, we're making the machine that can fix this, I think. Kagari tore her hair and let loose a cry that sounded like it came from the pits of hell.
She might have finally slipped beyond our abilities to take care of. She was like a puppet whose strings had been cut. All the strength left her body and she fell forward. Fetch. By the time I left Lukaku's house, the rain had stopped. We waited for a while after that, but Kagari showed no signs of waking up. She looked peaceful as she was sleeping, so I decided to leave her to Miri and Lukaku and head back to the lab. Fetch. According to the two, the two of them, she'd gotten confused several times in the past, but never like this. We might have underestimated how dangerous her situation really was. Her brain was probably under a lot of stress already. We needed a way to deal with this, and now. Before that... Oh my gosh, we finally did it? Oh, good, great timing, guys. Could we have done it an hour ago? The second I opened the door, I heard Dara and Maho yelling. I ran inside without even taking the time to remove my shoes. Mm. Yeah, long story. Lots of tears, sky tears, and then people kind of dying. We gotta go. Dyro gave me a thumbs up. Yep. He could say that, but I knew exactly how much talent and effort it took to hack CERN. Your average hacker couldn't do it. The name Super Hacker wasn't just for show. Mao stuck her thumb up just like Dara had. Oh, finally, some good news. まあ、これも全部あなたやかがりさんから情報を得られたからなんだけど。そういう意味では、かがりさんの中にクリスの記憶が残っていて助かったわね。うん。いや、それでも完成させたのは、ヒアジョーさんの力だ。ありがとう。
Let off small sigh of relief and send back an answer. Goddess. Uh, so Kagari woke up. She's calmed down. Goddess. Sorry. Can you look after her for a while? I'll contact you if I need you. Yeah. Yeah, it's bad. Yeah, it's bad. And the worst thing, here's the other problem too, is like even if we had the technology to try and pull out, how do we pull out just specific memories? So far we've done completely mind copies. That's not gonna help her. And how do we stop them from like her memories are now becoming so muddled? When we first like came upon her, she first started remembering. We probably could even see if we mapped her brain activity, separation, and the locations of the memory storage. But by now, they're starting to blend together so much. I'm not sure if we can separate them anymore. If we can, it's going to be one of the most incredibly like delicate uh, brain surgeries, effectively. Fetch, man. I don't even know. We might not be able to do anything with a time leap machine, really. But unless we knew who we were up against, there was nothing we could do. <gasps> oh no. Daru and I exchanged glances at the sudden voice from the development room. I'm sure. When we looked inside, Maho turned around in a state of shock. <laughs> Oh, that's not good. They're closing in fast. What did they get? What did they get? The call was from the hotel. Maho was staying at a business hotel in Waco City. Yeah, I said that right that time. Sometime in the past few days when she'd been staying there, someone had ransacked it. She'd left her key card with the front desk, but they were there were signs that the lock had been picked. She'd just given her okay they she'd just given her okay to search the room. What about the laptop? Where's the laptop? ま、ま、ま、もしかして下着とかも。そういうのは全部持ってきてるわよ。セクハラで訴えましょうか? Yeah, yeah, probably. それだけはかんべ。ま、私の部屋って普段から散らかってるから荒らされてるように見えただけって可能性もある。楽観的に考えればね。うん。鍵が開けられてたっていうから誰かが入ったのは間違いないでしょうけど。実はついこの間もオフ
Well, last time that didn't stay super secret for long. That made me feel a lot better. Now, if only we knew what had broken into her room, but that wouldn't be that easy. Still, if they'd done something like that, they must have been starting to panic. What would they do next? Come here! Wait a second. Yeah, that's thinking with your big brain. I didn't want to waste time explaining, so I just took out my phone and made the call. Several days later. Fetch, really? Okay. Well, I guess we're going to stop here then. <laughs> Not the best place to stop, but I am curious to see. And cliffhangers are always great, right? Keep coming back for more. Anyway, thank you guys so much for being here today. Ooh, a lot of interesting tidbits in this episode. But yeah, the the shadow of the, the dilemma. If we had to choose between the two somehow, or if we got that option, what would we pick? I miss Kurosu terribly. I really wish she were here. She is one of my favorite all-time characters, but I wouldn't want to bring her back like that. Not at the expense of another soul. That just, that's just not right. I don't think Kurosu would agree with that either. Good grief, she willingly let Mayuri be the one that survived. She was willing for that to be her choice. And she willingly sent us back to a timeline when she knew she would die in the post when we were taken back there for that brief little spell. Kudushu would never, ever, ever, ever want somebody else to be sacrificed so that she could live on. Even though, and that wouldn't even be living on. She'd probably, argue, she would argue with me. She'd probably say, that wouldn't be me. It'd be a facsimile. Wouldn't even be real. That's terrible. Now, the best thing we can think so or hope for is that Kagari's original imp uh, mind was is imprinted and saved. If we can find that original file and then upload it to, Kagar uh, to Kagari, maybe that would overwrite the Kudusu memories and be able to fix everything. But I don't know. But we'll have to see what happens next time. So thank you so much for being here today. Thanks so for joining me on the channel. As always, it's a pleasure having you here. It's a pleasure just being here and just enjoying this time with you. So thanks for giving me that little bit of your time. And hopefully we'll see you next time. But until the next video, watch me. I'll see me next. I'll see you there. <laughs>